Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're drilling into how just five days of ultra processed snack foods can rewire the brain's appetite and reward systems before any weight shows up on the scale. We'll explore what the research found and, more importantly, how you can reverse the damage. Thanks, Ethan. The headline is stark. A Nature Metabolism study showed that healthy young men who added 1,500 calories of chips, candy, and similar snacks each day for five days developed measurable disruptions in brain insulin signaling. Those changes persisted even after they stopped the binge, affecting memory, decision-making, and hunger regulation. Let's unpack that protocol. 29 men aged 19 to 27 split into a control group and a high-calorie snack group. The snack group kept their regular meals, but layered on those extra 1,500 calories. Crucially, they didn't gain weight in that short window, yet their brains told a very different story. Right. Functional MRI scans revealed that insulin's ability to calm food-seeking activity dropped in regions tied to reward and visual food cues. One week after returning to normal eating, insulin responsiveness was still blunted, indicating the brain doesn't rebound quickly. Liver fat also increased, underscoring that metabolic stress starts internally long before body mass index moves. Many listeners equate insulin with blood sugar, not with appetite. What exactly happens when insulin signaling falters in the brain? Insulin normally helps the brain register satiety and control impulses. When that pathway is disrupted, you remain physiologically hungry even after sufficient calories. The study participants showed decreased sensitivity to food rewards yet heightened drive to seek them, an imbalance resembling addiction patterns observed in long-standing obesity. Structural integrity was hit too. The paper mentions white matter changes after only five days. How significant is that? It's significant because white matter forms the communication highways between cognitive and reward centers. Reduced integrity there means delayed signals that would normally tell you to stop eating. Researchers saw alterations in tracks linking the prefrontal cortex, your decision hub, to deeper reward circuits. That mirrors damage documented in chronic overeating, but arrived with unprecedented speed. Beyond the lab, we're bombarded by cues, commercials, packaging, smells. How do these environmental triggers mesh with the brain changes you've described? They amplify them. A review in Proceedings of the Nutrition Society explained that neuromarketing exploits emotional processing areas, conditioning you to eat purely because a cue appears, not because energy is needed. Over time, the cue itself becomes the reward, overriding internal hunger satiety rhythms. The term sensory-specific satiety often surfaces here. Could you clarify that for our audience? It's the phenomenon where satisfaction with one flavor declines as you eat it, yet appetite revives when a new taste or texture is offered. Buffets leverage this quirk. You feel full after a savory entree, but dessert appears and you make room. Modern food environments perpetually rotate flavors, ensuring satiety signals never quiet cravings for long. Dopamine usually headlines discussions on food addiction. How does it distinguish between wanting and liking food? Repeated exposure to hyperpalatable foods sensitizes dopamine release in the brain's reward center. You start to want the stimulus even when you no longer like or enjoy the taste. That decoupling drives compulsive intake, similar to substance addiction, because the anticipated reward never fully materializes, pushing you to chase it again. Let's move to solutions. If five days can derail insulin signaling, how do listeners restore balance? Step one is environmental hygiene. Remove ultra-processed items from your immediate surroundings. Out of sight means your brain encounters fewer prompts to expect them. Start with the single snack you overeat most often, chips, sugary cereal, soda, and clear it out entirely. Consistency matters more than tackling the whole pantry overnight. Listeners often ask for macro guidance. What does real food balance look like for appetite stability? Aim for 45 to 55% of calories from unrefined carbohydrates. Think fruit, root vegetables, white rice. Protein should land near 0.8 grams per pound of ideal body weight. 
with about one-third from collagen-rich sources such as slow-cooked meats or bone broth gelatin. Healthy animal fats, grass-fed butter, ghee, tallow, can comprise 30 to 40% of calories. This profile sustains energy without triggering excessive dopamine spikes. Mindful eating also features in the research. How does simply changing meal context retrain the brain? Eating without screens or work distractions allows the gut-brain axis to register mechanical stretch, nutrient sensing, and hormonal feedback in real time. Designate one reset meal daily, sit, chew slowly, note textures and satiety cues. Over weeks, the prefrontal cortex relearns to interpret fullness accurately, curbing reflex snacking. Physical activity rounds out the strategy. Why does basic movement matter for craving control? Daily walking, ideally an accumulated 60 minutes, improves whole body insulin sensitivity and modulates stress hormones. Lower cortisol and better glucose uptake mean fewer energy dips that typically spark cravings. Movement also stimulates brain-derived neurotrophic factor, supporting the very neural circuits undermined by ultra-processed diets. We've covered rapid brain changes, environmental conditioning, and practical reversals. Let's crystallize takeaways. Ultra-processed foods can impair hunger regulation in under a week. The damage lingers, and reversing course starts with real food, mindful meals, and daily movement. Exactly. Recognize that cravings aren't moral failings. They're neurochemical signals shaped by exposure. Remove the triggers, feed the brain with nutrient-dense choices, move your body, and the circuitry recalibrates. Consistency over perfection wins this battle. That's all for today on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, thanking you for listening and encouraging you to audit your pantry and take that first restorative walk. And I'm Alara Skye. Join us next time as we investigate how specific micronutrients influence mitochondrial resilience. Until then, stay informed and stay well. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.